Hello, welcome to English Club TV News. Hello, welcome to Outlook. My name's Andy Rudd. Today we're going to be talking about the 100th anniversary of the sinking of the Titanic. Was it a tragedy or was it nature telling us that technology has gone a bit too far? First, we'll watch a news article about the anniversary. Later in the programme, we'll bring in two experts who will discuss the issue. Sinking. When a ship submerges into water, for example, they still talk about the sinking of the Titanic. Exactly 100 years ago, on April 15th, the luxury cruise liner, the Titanic, sank and 1,517 people on board lost their lives. The Royal Mail ship Titanic was one of three Olympic-class passenger liners commissioned by the White Star Shipping Line. Hailed as a wonder of luxury, power and style, she first rolled into the water from the slipway in Belfast's Harland and Wolf Shipyard to much fanfare in May 1911. On April 10, 1912, the Titanic set sail from Southampton on her maiden voyage, traveling to New York via Cherbourg in France and Queenstown in Ireland. Nicknamed the Millionaire's Special, the ship was captained by Edward J. Smith, who was known as the Millionaire's Captain because of his popularity with wealthy passengers. On board the vessel were some 1,300 passengers, of which more than half were traveling third class, many hoping to immigrate to America. Four days into her maiden voyage, the liner struck an iceberg late on the night of April 14th. The ship's starboard side scraped along the iceberg, rupturing at least five of her supposedly watertight compartments. As the ship's forward compartments filled with water, the bow sank deeper into the ocean, causing water from the ruptured compartments to spill over into each succeeding compartment, thereby sealing the ship's fate. Less than three hours after striking the iceberg, the unsinkable liner broke in two and sank in the early hours of April 15th. Of an estimated 2,223 passengers and crew aboard the ship, some 1,517 died. In addition to being the subject of numerous books, the ship inspired several films including James Cameron's blockbuster movie Titanic, 1997. So that was the news report. Now I'd like to introduce two guests that we have in the studio today. Firstly we have Debbie Johnson who is a qualified English teacher and a former editor? Yes. Right. Uh, a former editor for a financial publication house. Yes, that's correct. Right. And we have Claire Ansell with us today. Welcome, mm -hmm. Claire. Thank you. Uh, Claire is also a qualified English teacher and an interpreter, I understand. Yes, thank you. Excellent. Okay. Right. First question to both of you. Um, what is your understanding of the Titanic tragedy? Well, I think the Titanic tragedy is something that most people can relate to because we all carry tragic stories within us. Mm -hmm. And so I think it sort of has become a symbol of what people feel inside themselves. Okay. And Claire, how about you? Yeah, I would say obviously first associations come from the film. Um, I was not around when this all hit the news, uh -huh. so um, most of what people know today is from what they've seen, either on, in films or on the TV, and it's been romanticized heavily. So, you know, when you think about major tragedies like the Holocaust um, and try and compare them with another major tragedy like the Titanic, they, they're quite different. So, mm -hmm. although many people died in both experiences, um, it's difficult to always consider it as a, as a tragedy and not a love story. Sure. Debbie, do you think this is Mother Nature telling us that we can take technology too far sometimes? I, I don't, I don't, because I think it's a human tendency to um, want to develop and improve and I think once we've opened that Pandora's box of uh, uh, developing technology, there's no putting it back in the box. Pandora's Box 
a source of many unforeseen troubles. So I think it's probably maybe just part of the process of uh, developing technology. There are going to be mistakes along the way. That's kind of how I feel. I've got to disagree. Really? Yeah, I think, you know, anytime we try and um, put something on us, mm -hmm. so whether it's wings or uh, some kind of barrier between the water, we're messing with things that humans were actually never meant to uh, exist in, mm -hmm. in that environment. So, you know, I think there's always going to be limitations, there's always going to be problems, and um, I don't think we should expect... Um, tragedies. I certainly hope we don't plan for them. Um, but, you know, I think as mankind, we need to realize that we're not invincible and there will be problems anytime we try and go outside the sphere of nature. Mm -hmm. okay. um, moving on, a, a lot of people died, uh, as we all know, through the film and through the history books. Um, there were not enough lifeboats mm -hmm. on yes. the Titanic. Mm -hmm. it, this was one of the reasons why so many people died. Um, you know, do you think that the beauty of the ship overcame the designers rather than the practicalities and the safety of this ship? Absolutely. <laughs> yeah? Absolutely. I, I don't even know because uh, these are experts we're talking about. I'm sure the people employed to build this ship were not uh, beginners fresh out of college. They should have known what they were doing and beauty or not. Um, it certainly is a major disappointment to find out that that such a major mistake is made mm -hmm. um, by, by experts, people sure. we trust our lives with. Okay. But I think the pride factor comes in on this because uh, uh, the pride factor, I think, determine their decisions about how many boats to put on the, the boat, for example. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And, uh, yeah, so... Sure, if they are so confident in their selves yeah, and their exactly. ability, then we don't yeah. need lifeboats. Yeah, exactly. Well, I mean, the big... The, one of the reasons why this, this came to be such a big story was that the Titanic was supposed to be unsinkable. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So maybe they considered that they didn't need all of these lifeboats because this boat was never going to sink in the first place. False so, PR. Yeah. Part yeah. of the pride. Yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah. So, um, one, of, one of the second things that happened here, a, a lot of women's lives were saved. Now, mm -hmm. This was at a time in 1912 when uh, gentlemen were gentlemen. Mm -hmm. yeah? And we had this phrase in English, women and children first. Mm -hmm. So in any sort of disaster, you get this women and children first philosophy. You see mm -hmm. it in all the films, you sure. read it in all the books. If this disaster happened today, do you think this would still be true? In this, in this oh. time of equality for women and... Yeah, Women I'd like to believe right. children would be first. Yes, I yes, think children I would agree. still definitely get priority. Yeah. Right. Okay. Um, but I can't say that women would get yeah, any no, special I think, place. I think there'd be some uh, competition going on between right. the men and the women. But I, I, I don't know if people would be uh, conscious enough to allow the women to go first, really. I think we've kind of become selfish, I think. But I'd like to believe that in a tragedy that Also, that it depends happen. on who the women and men are to each other. I think yes, if they were yeah. a couple, I, I believe that most men would put their, their girlfriends or their wives mm -hmm. first. But if okay. we're uh, unfamiliar with each other, I think then, mm -hmm. regardless of if you're a man or a woman, it doesn't make a difference. I'm on that lifeboat. <laughs> yeah, or, or they'd go together. Like, <laughs> we're not go going, together. We're going down yeah. together. We're getting off together. Uh -huh. <laughs> So the story I'm kind of hearing here is that despite the fact that it's the 21st century, gentlemen are still gentlemen. Yeah, there might be less of them, but the uh -huh. ones that are gentlemen are mm -hmm. still gentlemen. Are still there, mm -hmm. yeah. Signal flare. A burst of light used to communicate or illuminate. One of the facts of the case was that uh, a boat called the Californian uh, was very close to the Titanic when this accident happened. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And there were radio messages, there were signal flares, um, which the Californian didn't answer. Yes. Uh, why was that? Do you, do you have any ideas why the captain of this boat didn't respond to these emergency requests. I, I'm actually not familiar with this. I'm familiar with the story, but I'm not familiar with the reason why. Well, I would imagine, again, we're coming back to competition here. If mm -hmm. this boat is taking the same um, route, uh, route yeah, uh -huh. then, 
you know, he doesn't want to be beat and um, kind of, it's horrible to say, but perhaps there was a feeling of, you know, he got what he deserved. Uh -huh. okay. Okay. Maybe too, it, it might tie into too that self-preservation thing you were talking about earlier. Maybe he was thinking, oh, I don't know if I want to get involved in this. I don't mm -hmm. know. Mm -hmm. you know. Or um, it's not my responsibility, yeah. kind of. Uh -huh. Sure. Okay. okay. Why has the Titanic story become so famous? I mean, we have, we have numerous books about it. We have more than one film, actually. The, the one with uh, Kate Winslet and Leonardo DiCaprio. Yes, yes. It's just the latest in about three or four films sure. mm -hmm. that, are, that have been made about this tragedy. Um, why is it? What is it about the Titanic story that, that, that captures mm -hmm. uh, people's imagination? Um, I think it's just Hollywood. Um, if you want to look at some other major traumatic events, take Pearl Harbor, for example. Uh -huh. Do we know about any specific battles in the World Wars as well as we know about Pearl Harbor? Mm -hmm. No. Why is that? Because we got to see Ben Affleck and Josh Hartnett strut across the scenes. Of uh -huh. course, it leaves greater impressions. Mm -hmm. So, sure. I think Hollywood. Mm -hmm. All right. I think, I think actually Titanic, I said this earlier, but I, I, I was thinking about this and I think Titanic kind of, uh, I think we, as, a, as human beings, we we tend to carry personal stories of tragedy. They're mm -hmm. kind of ingrained in us. We sure. learn them when we're young. Then, then that forms a collective tragedy kind of in the air. And stories like the Titanic, I think, tap into that inner tragic story that we carry. Right. And I think that, uh, in a, I think that Hollywood uh, uses that mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. to hook us in. Okay. So uh, that's kind of that's kind of how I see it. Okay, ladies, thank you very much for that. Uh, our camera crews went out and interviewed the general public to get their opinion about the Titanic earlier this week. Let's watch the video now. Mm -hmm. I know there's a big movie about it. So you, when you hear the word Titanic, it means only a movie for you. No, it means the other thing too, but I heard a funny joke that said that they, they, named, a, they named a historical tragedy after the movie. So do you know any facts? I actually? just know that it was a it was a big boat. Supposedly wasn't able to be sunk. Uh, as long as only one or two of the uh, of the sort of chambers under under at the bottom of the boat were smashed. But unfortunately, when it got broken, there were like three or four that got smashed, and so it sank in about an hour or so. And uh, most of the people were drowned. Because uh, I also heard that uh, I only remember a little random details, but I remember that uh, they said that. The designer of the boat didn't like the way the lifeboats looked on the deck, so we decided there should be fewer, because it wasn't going to sink anyway. Uh, first association is, of course, a tragedy. Great tragedy and disaster which caused uh, people's deaths. And the second uh, association is maybe James Cameron's film, Titanic, but we should bear in mind that it's a fictional story with elements of real historic events, and uh, we shouldn't forget this awful experience. So when you hear the word Titanic, what do you think? I think of something big, something terrible, something historic. I think of a big movie. Yeah, so is it more movie for you or uh, historical? No, for me it's more historical. So do you know any details about it? I don't know any details, but I've seen pictures of it. It's like a floating uh, grand hotel. Yeah. Very wealthy people. And uh, it went down the year my mother was born. So I think that was a historic connection. Well, I know there is that Hollywood fever about the movie that is coming in 3D, but it's a movie for girls, but when I hear Titanic, I first think about uh, the tragedy that happened 100 years ago, I suppose, yeah? And the disaster really took lives of many people. And one is for sure that it changed the history and it changed the way the ship are now built. So that's it. Did you get anything else from this? Well, you know, as I was listening, uh, something kind of entered my mind I never thought about before. When they were talking about the actual movie, I realized that they were juxtaposing two themes in the movie that I never picked up. Tragedy. A disastrous event, especially one involving distress and loss or injury to life. Uh, one is what we had talked about earlier about how uh, the uh, um, 
people, the, the self-preservation issue. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But interestingly, the romanticized uh, part of Titanic, of the two fictional characters, Jack and Rose, they, uh, they were kind of showing the self-sacrifice that pe might have been happening as well. Uh -huh. And I kind of, after watching them all talking, that's what was, that's kind of what went into my head. And I think the movie might have brought out those two themes beautifully, actually, even though there is that at that underlying theme of the danger of romanticizing a tragedy. Sure. Okay. Claire, did you get anything else from this video, um, this poll? I have to say that, you know, everybody mentioned the film. Uh -huh. So for better or for worse, Hollywood at least helps people be aware of certain situations okay. because, you know, if they hadn't done that, how many of us would really know anything about sure. that tragedy sure. and of course it's important for us to remember these things so mm -hmm. uh, as much as I criticize um, this over romanticized image uh, there's definitely uh, some good from publicity. Mm -hmm. um, we have a news clip now of uh, another potential tragedy story that Hollywood could romanticize for us. It, it has all of the themes uh, similar to Titanic, deaths, romance, and a sinking again of a boat. So uh, let's watch the news story now. Leur navire, un paquebot de croisière géant de la compagnie Costa, a fait naufrage vendredi soir près d'une île italienne, avec plus de 4000 passagers à bord. Mais pour la compagnie Costa, c'est la confusion qui régnait au moment de l'impact qui est à l'origine de la catastrophe. Un homme a déjà porté plainte. To be in denial, to refuse to agree or comply with a statement, to contradict. So that was the Costa Concordia uh, that sank about six months ago now. Mm -hmm. um, as I say, very, very similar story. We have this uh, Italian captain who was romanticizing his girlfriend on, on the bridge of the boat trying to give her a very splendid view of the Italian coastline and uh, when this accident happened. What, Debbie, what do you know about this story? Uh, what I know is that uh, he, he, got, he, went, he, he basically uh, didn't follow many regulatory rules. He went outside the shipping zone to mm -hmm. show a good view. And uh, he, as I understand, was in denial about what was happening and he took a long time to act. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It took over two hours mm -hmm. to evacuate the boat when the regulations say that he should have done it maybe within 30 minutes. Mm -hmm. Yes. So, uh, Claire, I, I mean, we have stories like this happening all of the time. We have the Bulgaria boat mm -hmm. disaster on the River Volga in Russia, for example. Mm -hmm. Very similar story. Unfortunately, tragedy again occurred with the loss of 122 lives. Um, what do you think? How does how do you think Hollywood picks these stories? What, what makes what turns just a simple news story into potential for a film? That's an interesting question. Um, you would have to write a f ask a film writer. Um, mm -hmm. <laughs> I suppose there's um, got to be something that they already know. So whether it's um, a personal story, perhaps that they have from somebody who they interviewed right. after the fact, who survived it, mm -hmm. um, that can really tell it explicitly and spark their imagination. Uh -huh. um, but, but personally, I don't know how they decide which stories um, warrant great films and which stories should be left in the news archives. Okay, okay. Yeah. I'm not sure if they would even do a story on this because uh, Titanic is like hard to epic, beat. hard to beat. <laughs> Right. But I think they'd be looking for new material completely. Okay. Yeah. So you don't so think we're going to get Titanic 2, no. Titanic 3? I honestly hope not. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> that too. would just be, you know, no. No, that would not you, know right. you can do Shrek 2, you can do Shrek 3, but or Titanic Ra 2. Rambo 5. Yeah, yeah. yeah, but not Titanic 2. We, we I agree. get this. So, uh, you know, there, there are plenty of news stories out there that, uh, mm. that have the potential. I think, uh, sure. and with some creative writing, of course, uh, anything today can be a blockbuster hit. Definitely. That's so. true. So ladies, is the Titanic story really a household name for you?
Household name. A personal thing that is very well known. I think it has the potential to be, uh, I mean, I can definitely see many things now being called Titanic-esque or something. Mm -hmm. uh, I can see the potential of it becoming like a very common theme as events like this happen, especially at sea. Mm -hmm. okay. Yeah. <laughs> can Play. you imagine the phrase coming out? That's so Titanic. Yeah, that's so Titanic. <laughs> oh, please. <laughs> we really don't want to import that from the USA. Sorry, sorry. So, it's okay, it's okay. Everyone's entitled to their opinion on this program. <laughs> okay, everyone, that just about wraps up this uh, program for today. Um, I'd like to remind you that, you know, if you go fishing, Hollywood is still looking for a new Titanic story out there, so be careful. Stay with us now. We have a press review of all the stories coming up after this program. World Events Updating Your English Thank you for choosing us.